Yo, what's going on? It's Johnny and I'm hanging out with Rob right here on Front Row Live. Congratulations with Four Abbey. This is an incredible uh, debut project for this debut, like for major label, man. Like this is like, I, I, I'm like, I'm shocked that it's something that you kind of like, created in your bedroom yet still was able to release it under a major label. I feel like not a lot of artists get that opportunity to be creative the way they want to uh, when they're on a major like that. Yeah, so man. Um, talk to me about creating for Abby, like in your bedroom instead of like in some mega uh, like studio. Um, yeah. So the, so basically how all that kind of came about is I, um, trying to figure out the right way to word this without uh giving too many details okay so when i was doing my you know negotiations with interscope over like a period of let's say like four to five months a really important thing that i would always push for is just like full creative autonomy like if it ain't broke like don't fix it like i've been making everything at home and i don't you know just because i'm on a major now doesn't mean i need to go into the studios and get the 30 40, $50,000 like month sessions where I block out a studio. Like I, I, I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to just keep making music at home. Everyone at Interscope was completely supportive of that. The only, the only thing that I think changed is I had the ability to get my things mixed and mastered now, which I wasn't able to do before. So I could hit up my a and at Interscope and just be like, hey, like I really want to reach out to like this person and see if they'd be interested in mixing this. And then they have those kind of connections to get in contact with that guy. Um, but for the most part, I made 90% of it at my house. I think I recorded two things in my buddy Dan's studio. And then I had Jason Evigan touch a few tracks, which it was done at his studio in another county in Los Angeles. But other than that, I would say about 90% of it was at my house with my gear. And I just self-produced and recorded it. Uh, and it's it just feels awesome. I don't think it needs to be like some sort of feat of like, it's a major label debut made in his room, but it's, it's definitely something that I'm really proud of because I, I didn't, I didn't like change. Like when I signed to a major, I, my, my biggest thing is I wanted to continue to like make art that was true to me. And like, I can only really do that. Like in the comfort of my own home when I'm just like vulnerable, you know what I mean? No, if I'm I, in a studio with an engineer, I get all freaked out. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do things. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, I and, and I think, sorry, the last thing. I think it sometimes works out for my benefit because I do things that are wrong that you're not supposed to do, but then that ends up sounding cool sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Cause I don't know what I'm doing. Like some, like I have no idea what I'm doing. And that, I mean, that, that kind of leads to my next question because like, I love that this whole body of work, like I know you, you recently posted on like on Instagram that, you know, it, it's, it's a body of work that needs to be listened from beginning to end. Like you can't scatter right. it around. But one thing that I love is that like the sounds are so different within every single track, but yet it's still one piece, you know, one same uh, body of work. So like, what was that creative process like for you? Uh, so that creative process for me was literally what you said. I was sitting back and I was like, whoa, all of these songs sound a lot different, right? Which then I had to, that's what made me have to come up with the concept for the record if, if, as I was like, okay, if all these songs are going to exist in this body of work and be in the same project, how can that even happen? Like Sabotage is like a hard song. When I Fell Apart is like a lo-fi weird piano song. Then Honey Pie is like a pop. Like, how is that all? And then that's when I got the idea of like, what if this is like a kid making a mixtape for a girl and these are all songs that he ripped off of the radio about like how he feels about her that way it makes sense, right? It doesn't matter if it's a pop song or a rock song or whatever. It's just a song that he ripped off of the radio. And then it that's that was my, like, I thought that was genius at the time and it really like isn't that groundbreaking at all. But for me, I was like, oh yes, like that makes it all come together. Um, because I didn't want somebody, if I, if I took out the intro and the interludes and the ending and you just listen to it, I think it would still be a cool project, but I do think it would be a little confusing and not like, it wouldn't be as cohesive. It would just seem kind of all over the place. I feel like you kind of need that like storyline behind it for it to like make sense kind of. Right. 
I mean, I, I uh, love those little interludes that you did. Like, I felt like she actually flipped the the, the, the tape, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, <thank laughs> like you. that was pretty dope. Um, but it's crazy because it sounds like you didn't really like know about this concept until you kind of created the music. Um, yeah. Usually I feel like it's backwards with artists where it's like they have a concept in mind and then they create the music around it. Um, right. So did you know how many more songs did you write for this record? or for this, for this project that, you know, ended up not fitting with this body of work. Yeah. Okay. So long story short, let's say maybe like seven to 10 and how, how that came about though is just fully transparently. I was going through a really tough time, man. I came off of a, a tour overseas. Me and my girlfriend had went through a pretty public breakup while I was overseas, came back home to like an empty house where all her things were like gone. Cause we were like basically living together at my house. Then all hit. So then I'm, I'm one like sad. Now I'm alone in this new like house in a new city. Can't go outside, just trapped by these walls. And then you just start making music. Right. And sometimes you don't know what things mean while you're doing them. So, so let's say I write a song like, uh, like coloring, right. I write coloring, having no idea where that's going to fit in the project at all. And then months and months later, you're like, oh, that's like what I was feeling at that time. Like, that's what that song kind of meant. And then eventually you have maybe 15 to 20 songs, but then you're like, wait, no, like these seven right here, like really make sense narrative wise. Now I'm just going to kind of arrange them around and then add an intro. And it, it just kind of all orchestrated itself. I feel like I didn't really do much. The songs kind of, they orchestrated themselves in a weird way. Like I just kind of like moved them around, but like, I, I feel like it was just like me sitting there like, Oh man, this one line I said like five months ago, like really makes sense now with this song I wrote last month. And now I kind of get what I meant back then. I didn't really know what this line meant, but now I get it. I feel like this all sounds really pretentious, but like, it's crazy. <laughs> it, it, I swear it happened that way. I'm not just making up these answers. You know, I feel like if I would have listened to this interview and heard I'm not going to name an artist, but if I heard somebody give this answer that I'm giving, I'd be like, oh, you douchebag. But like, I, this really is like <laughs> how it happened for me. It was like therapy, though. Like, I, I didn't have a therapist at the time. And it was the first time music was really like therapy for me. Like, I was genuinely like, there's songs I wrote on there when I was like the happiest I've ever been in my life. And there's songs I wrote on there that was truly like at the lowest I've ever like felt as a human. And I think that dynamic's really cool because I, I previous to that, as I don't know if you know, I wasn't really a serious artist kid. I was kind of like, Oh, that's that urban outfitter, like honey pie kid. <laughs> and I was starting to write about some like really serious things to me. And I don't even know if I was ready for that. I had never done music like that before. So it was definitely a really cool learning experience. But yeah, there was about 15, seven to 10, I don't even know, somewhere in there of songs that didn't make it in demos and stuff. I think like, that's probably why it, what, you also wanted to kind of do it in your bedroom just by yourself, just because you were kind of stepping out into out of your comfort zone, um, you know, getting a little vulnerable with some of these tracks and- um, 150%, like, I feel like and it if, I, been if I'm writing a song about how sad I am, I don't want to do it with a stranger in the room right. that I don't know, you know? Right. I agree. And, you know, like listening to the album or the, the record, the project, like, um, you know, I, I love how we go through so many different emotions. Like in doing that, do you feel like a certain emotion or a certain song kind of challenge you the most because of what you were talking about or what you were you were singing about? Um, I didn't necessarily run into anything like that. Uh... There was definitely a few things because I've wrote songs about like a couple people on this, like friends and like past things or whatever. There was definitely like a couple things that like I took off the project or that I like changed a line in because I was like, oh, this is like way, way too on the nose. And like just months later, I'd come back to it and be like, yeah, that was definitely like for me in that moment. But like the world doesn't need to like hear that. You know what I mean? Um I was pretty comfortable with everything else though. Like I said, it was the first time it felt therapeutic. So like when I write a song like Sabotage, even though Sabotage is a fictional song, it's not nonfiction. Like there's, there's, there's tones and like emotions in there that are real though. And then I'm just making a story about somebody else. But 
it i went in the room that day and was like yo i feel like shit and like i'm home and i just came home off this tour and like i want to make just an angsty mad song and then that's kind of just what came out you know what i mean uh i didn't i didn't necessarily feel challenged though i don't think um just that internal struggle of like you know what maybe i shouldn't put this one on the project maybe this is one that i just keep for me and that was a moment that i had but like the world doesn't need to hear this you know now you also mentioned that this is like the first body of work that you're proud of um yeah what i mean why have like why do you feel this way about this project? Um, you know, a- away from the fact that it's on a major label, um, you know, like why is this project like making you so proud? Because before it came out, uh, no matter what the result is, whether it changes my life or whether I tank and Interscope drops me and I and do nothing forever, right? Or if they shelve me, no matter what the outcome is, make millions of dollars and get completely broke, in that moment when I heard the final playthrough from start to finish, when nobody has heard it and it's not out in the world, it has zero plays, it's just me listening to it, I could sit back and be like, I'm like 100% happy with this and like proud of, I'm proud to like stamp my name on this. I know my team is proud to stamp their names on this and like something about feeling that, you know, money, you get it and then you want more. Sex, you like have sex you want more all these like fake obtainable things in life you get but the only thing that like you the only satisfaction you get that like stays is like self-happiness and self-love again another pretentious thing but with music it's the same way you know what i mean if you just make a song and you're like oh i don't really love this but this is gonna come out and it's gonna blow up and i'm gonna fucking do crazy numbers like that's sick and all but then you have to go to sleep at night and be like I didn't really love this, you know what I mean? Right. But when I when I was happy? listening to my project and I had zero plays, I was sitting here like, no matter what the fuck happens, I don't care if this tanks and everyone hates it, like I'm happy with it and that's enough. I was chilling. It's like your mother or like father when you're a kid and they're like, yo, if you study for this test and you fail, I'm not gonna punish you because I don't care because I know that you tried. It was that kind of shit where I was like, I don't care what happened. I don't give, I don't care if this gets on a playlist or anything like I might be a little butthurt at the end of the day, but like, <laughs> there's, there's no way that like, I'm going to, it's not numbers won't quantify how I feel about this project, you know? Right. Uh, in right. short, that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was a very all over the place answer. I, said, like, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it coincides with, with the project. So you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm scatterbrained. Like I'm, I'm all over the place, man. No, that's, that's dope. Like, uh, for me, you know, listening to this project, two songs stuck out to me the most, Super Bad Mantra and uh, You Got a Man. And those songs just, you know, given that, you know, there's these emotions on this record, those songs made me, no matter what, just kind of like felt me want to get a little bit of a groove going. Um, so, you know, talk to me about the creative process of, of those tracks and like the production that you used behind them. Yeah, man. I, I think that sad songs can be happy sometimes, you know, like you got to make like outcast. Hey, y'all. It's like a perfect example of that. Uh, so you got a man's like a sad song, but I wanted it to, you know, bump. And I, the creative process, super bad mantra. I don't have as much of a deep answer about because I actually wrote the demo for that like a year and a half ago. Um So that was like already made. I kind of already had that idea. And basically I just finished it and polished it when I made this project. But with You Got A Man, it was just, it just came out in the room that day. That's that's a simple answer. It was just, I went in the room with my buddy, Dan. Uh, That's what I meant when I said 90% of it was made in my bedroom and 10% was made out. Cause I went to his home studio. um, And it was actually my first time ever working out of a studio that wasn't my own. And- we both were just play. He was like, what are you in the mood to make? And I was like, dude, I don't, I just, I really want, I just have some shit on my chest that I want to say. And I just want like a four on the floor kind of vibe to it. And we just slowly started building the song and we finished it all in one day. And those are the best songs. I feel like the ones that you don't spend weeks trying to make, they just come out in like two hours and you're finished. And then you just, you're like, okay, that's our song. And then you just kind of like polish it. Um, I, I don't I wish I had a deeper answer for like the creative process <laughs> on but a lot of these I, I really like truthfully almost every song on this project other than 40 ounce the actual meat of the songs were made and finished in 
less than two hours. Honey pie. Jeez. I made it. I made honey pie in 45 minutes. I made the demo super bad mantra in like an hour. I made you got a man in about two hours. We made sabotage in about three hours. They just, they're just those ideas that feel good and they just kind of yeah. come out, you know? And I think that's, that says something. I think if you're, if you're spending too much time trying to make a song it just, that's, I don't know. That's not a, that's not how I work is what I say. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm one of those That's people a- that if I'm not feeling it, I just, you know, I move on kind of. I, yeah, yeah. I have ADHD. You've seen it. You've talked to me now for 15 minutes. I'm <laughs> all over the place. Like, I can't sit down and sit still. So if me and a buddy or somebody are in my studio and we're spending too long worried about an idea, I'm just like, let's just go to the next idea, man. Like, this, why should wow. we force it, you know? Do you ever come back to that? Or it's just, it's gone. It's- yeah, that was the next thing I was going to say. I just didn't want to cut you off. Is some of those ideas that you start and then you're like, ah, I'm not really feeling this. You, you might come back eight months later, open it up. And now you have new inspiration or you went through a different life experience or your ears are different. You've heard different melodies on the radio or something. And you might hear shit you never heard before. And it might turn into something great. Sometimes things could be a f- song three years later. You never know. I think Charlie Puth, Put out a song a couple months ago that he wrote like three years ago or something like yeah it's crazy how that happens sometimes now as far as like sonics the production like how do you feel you challenge yourself with this project um how do i feel like i challenge myself i, I feel if anything maybe i like push myself to not be so in my box that I, I myself put myself in, it's not like anyone put me in it, but I feel like I went from like here, just like doing okay as an artist to like honey pie coming out. And it just like took me from here to here. Uh, and that's like kind of all I was known for. And I probably still am now just known for that. And I really wanted to just, when I was, when in like February, when I was sitting back with this project, I was like, I really, really want, if somebody only knows that song, if they listen to my whole project, I want them to see that I'm not like a one trick pony that like, this is really what I love to do. And like, I didn't just get lucky off a song. Like this is all I'm supposed to do. This is what I was born to do. And that's why I put the song last as track 10 is I wanted everyone to hear everything else I had to say first. And then hopefully they're like, Oh, I get it now. Like this kid, you know, he's like a, cube like you can do anything kind of uh, so i feel like that might have been what i pushed myself to do with this uh mm. or what i at least tried to i may have not succeeded for all i know who knows maybe everyone's like this kid this shit it's, sucks it's, <laughs> it's still too soon to tell this just dropped like a few days yeah, ago so exactly um, for all i know th- that when this interview comes out i could have gotten the worst reviews ever pitchfork <laughs> hate it anthony fantano may rip it to shreds i don't even know <laughs> I, I just pictured him like talking about it right now <laughs> yeah i think he would hate it but i would love it if he did i love him yeah. so much even if you gave it a bad review it's I would great press so man. it's great press <laughs> i would just be like yes like the <laughs> man i was big enough to be on that podcast like youtube not channel. even that i don't even care about that i just want <laughs> i just love him dude i've been watching his videos for so long he's just the goat <laughs> that's awesome man well congratulations with poor abby um i Thank feel you, like you, you know this is this is the beginning of like of of johnny i feel like it's gonna like open the doors um for a lot of new listeners for you that you know not just heard honey pie but now they get a different taste of you so congratulations with that congratulations with the signing with Thank interscope you. and uh definitely look forward to more music from you man Thank you, man. Bless you. And thank you for having me on the the show and the YouTube channel and everything. Thank you. I'm very grateful.